Welcome back. This is Jeremiah. And we are and we're looking at Exodus here for a moment because that's where we're headed here. Um, later on, <clears throat> probably this month, we're going to look at Exodus 23. I have quite a few things we're going to mention here. And let me let me speak something to you. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant, and I'm pondering a few things in the future here. This is New Covenant with Jeremiah. We greet you in the one name given, and we rejoice in the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we anticipate the horn of the shofar to get us out of here and to be with the one who loves you and the one who's going to bring you comfort throughout eternity without any more hassles, without any more pains. Uh, we just went through the rapture, and that, that's what we focus on here quite a bit, is the rapture here, getting out of here. We occupy. I just had a, good, a small dinner, a small lunch. And we, we occupy. We have things to do, and we enjoy things here off and on, but that's not the point. The point is we're ready to get out of here on, on many levels. Jeremiah, you're looking at Exodus 23. Yeah, I was looking here at um, where we're going with this Exodus law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the five books there of the law. And of course, we, I wanted to, uh, but I won't look at that right now. As obviously, 20 is monstrous here. Uh, 20 has a lot to do of Exodus with Deuteronomy 7 and 8 and so forth. And this becomes a big issue for us. Um, and we have numbers after that, of course, enumerating everyone. But... Uh, and Deuteronomy is your last book there, of course. And it talks a lot about commandments over and over again. And uh, the same theme happens over and over again. And once you get rid of the theme, such as the fear of the Lord, and every word that proceeded from the mouth of God and the commandments of God, um, you, you you have a foundation that you that you can't forget. And this is why we have a foundation here with 52 basic um, uh, concepts here. Um, the fear of the Lord is probably going to be put under sound doctrine. Uh, I forgot where I put the fear of the Lord, but the fear of the Lord becomes the cornerstone. And, and of course, living bread has a lot to do with the fear of the Lord, and a lot of everything that we do here is based upon the fear of the Lord. And uh, it has a lot to do with 19, being born again, and baby steps, which I mentioned, and, and it, it's really part of everything. It's very difficult not to mention the fear of the Lord. And it's, it, it goes in with the, the commandments of the Lord. Uh, it's right in the middle of 20 here that we looked at. has a lot to do with 7 and 8, which is really big here. I have work that I have for you. Um, but because the Lord loved you, which is really what this is all about, and that is Deuteronomy 7, uh, 7. And, and it becomes the core issue of all Bible study, which is the Lord loved you. That's, and that's what he's telling Israel that you've been selected for the love of God. And some people have not. And and this becomes the core issue of Bible study, and it, and it has to do with the fear of the Lord. Uh, the fear of the Lord is tied in with, because I have loved you. Um, and, and 
and it goes back to the Psalms, because thou hast loved me, I will deliver you. Because you have known my name, I will set you securely on high. Because you have loved me, I will set you. So then everything always comes back to that. We just read in Deuteronomy 7.7. 7. We're going to get into Corinthians momentarily as I bounce around those two books, but we're going to spend a lot of time in 7-7 seven, seven area, and we're going to go back to Exodus 20, which gets into the fear of the Lord and the same thing. To love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and we get into this um, mercy situation and the fear of the Lord. And the mercy situation and the fear of the Lord are also cornerstone scriptures. And as a Bible teacher, I have to hammer those home, uh, you know, like every other day, every other week here at least. Again, we have to really stay in those cornerstone ideas of Christianity. That the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And right in the middle of these Ten Commandments, we're going to get into a little later. Um, we, we, we get into uh, 2020, and Moses said unto the people, so that's what we have to do here. I, I'm Moses here. And I have to make sure that I take you through all of this Mount Sinai experience properly and in order. And the fear of the Lord is the, is the center point throughout your entire Bible. The Master says, fear him, exclamation point, like loud. Fear him. So it, it becomes a, 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 one of the main themes wherever you go in the Bible. And we're in the New Covenant now. You might think that that may not be a part of the issue. No, it's still, cor it's still a cornerstone issue. And, 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 and then, let me share something with you about this fear of the Lord and the respect of God and so forth. A lot of people have, have damaged the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the reason why they've done that, and I've seen some Bible teachers do that, very prominent Bible teachers and evangelists. And the damage that they, that they do is, is to remove the respect of God as authority. And this is not good. It's, it's almost as though they're heretics, but they may not be going that far. In other words, they're, they're twisting, but we don't know if we want to say that they're heretics. But they're, it's not good to make a minor twist in the gospel, and, which is what we can definitely... Uh, conclude okay you know such as telling people that that they don't need to fear the Lord anymore in the New Testament the master clearly says to fear him father you and, and the word is not necessarily fear as, as much as it is respect and in other words the theme of the fear of the Lord as Paul said that others may be fearful of sinning. The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling and trauma. You're supposed to be shaking at this Christian walk because it's, it's war. And, 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 to, and for me or any Bible teacher to tell you that everything is super kicked back here and, and don't fear God anymore and just take it easy is, is utter nonsense. And there may, there may be some scriptures that give you the, the inclination that you don't have to fear the Lord, but you haven't been paying attention. The master said, fear him, and he means it. He just told you he loved you, then he told you to fear him. So it's obvious for anyone paying attention, yet you're supposed to fear him and love him. And these are, this is what you're supposed to do. Now, Paul, he dances around that, and a lot of your Bible teachers, you know, in the Bible and so forth, they'll dance around this, this idea, and they're trying to be nice, and they're being cordial, and it's, it's all legitimate. There's nothing wrong with dancing around the idea of fearing the Lord. John, he, he, he's definitely someone who doesn't want to uh, shake anybody up, 
John is obviously a very nice guy, um, you know, who wrote you know, John 1, 2, 3, and the, the book of Revelation, and the Gospel of John. So he is obviously what you might call a very nice guy. He, he's not really one to give you a lot of warnings. Uh, you know, he's not one to yell at you or anything. And, uh, and that's fine. However, uh, he has his job, and, and James has his. Let's put it that way. You know, we have different people that teach us, and the master said, fear him, that means fear him. So you might say, God is all love, and he, and he you know, he, he, he's not someone that you need to fear, which is very common right now. But, but it's, it, it's been dispersed throughout the Christian uh, um, era of 2,000 years, uh, uh, from the beginning, where people have snuck into the church and so forth and said, you don't need to fear God, he, he, he's cool with anything you want to do, so relax, take it easy, and, and you're saved by grace. Let me give you some more scriptures that show you that God is just going to be nice to you all the time, no matter what you do and what you say. And so what Paul has to do is he has to confront that ideology, and so do I. It's not biblical sound doctrine. And when we go to Exodus 20 and, and Deuteronomy 7 and 8, uh, where, where God said, I love you, I have loved you, it, it, it's not a love that doesn't have conditions. In other words, some people say that God has unconditional love. That's utter nonsense. Uh, <laughs> God's already basically said a hundred times a Sunday that if you don't love him, he's not going to love you. So there, there's your first condition right there. And loving him is respecting him as Lord, which is which is summarizing your entire Bible. I'm giving you some overarching principles here, and Exodus brings that point home. Um, excuse me, 20 especially. There's another verse or two I wanted to talk about here before we, we get into Corinthians, but I wanted to point out that when you get to Exodus 20, you have don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, and if you do this, you, 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 you'll, be, you'll be punished. And so the, the Israelites read this, and they go, Okay, we can't do this, otherwise we, we dish out punishment. And of course they misunderstand what was going on. And the first thing they misunderstood was uh, Exodus 20, verse 6, big time. In other words, they really missed out on on your, your uh, what, what's the point I want to make? The, the clarification of the Ten Commandments is in 26 of Exodus. It clarifies the Ten Commandments so that you don't get lost in, into performance. But you have, to be, you have to pay attention. Most of the Israelites who are in Israel today and throughout history, since the, the, the birth of these five books of the law, most of them have been, uh, have been wrong or they, they haven't understood what they're, what they're teaching. And the answer to their problem was right in their face, and they stumbled over it. See, in other words, they, they became lawmen, law, 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 and they missed right in the law um, what, what it was all about, which is Exodus 26. That is the cornerstone scripture, basically, of the entire Bible. Israelite, no matter who you are. I had a gentleman at the library. It was hot one day in the desert. I used to live in the desert for a couple of years, and oh, it was a hot day. It was horrible. I went to the library, where they had the AC on, of course, and it was nice to hang out in the library. But you have to face the music. And I went outdoors for a while. It was cooling down a little. And a gentleman walked out of there, and he was yelling, the law, the law, the law, everything is the law. So he went back to the Old Testament here and be became a Judaism uh, teacher, which is you must obey the law, otherwise there's nothing going to happen to you in, in terms of you being recognized by God. That's what he was saying. I, I tried to share a few things with him, but he wasn't listening. He was stuck on, you must obey the law. He doesn't understand 
that when you come to Jesus Christ, you are no longer under the curse of the law, which is you must obey everything in order to be good with God. Moses said you must live by them if you're going to preach them as a way of life or as a way to be justified. Obviously, Moses is going to teach the law. We establish the law, but we're just not under it. I'm going to teach that at the end of this year. I'm going to teach that concept uh, um, basically found in Romans. Now, Paul mentions that a little bit in Corinth and elsewhere. Your Bible mentions it. The Master mentions it. But I'm going to do a little more clarification for you, okay? As to the law and mercy, because what, what you have in Exodus 20, you, have, you must do these things. Now, there's a couple of things going on here. In Exodus 20, and we're going to go to this chapter quite a bit because it's really the cornerstone of your Bible on many levels. Because the Ten Commandments, in spite of the fact that a lot of Christian churches in America and so forth, or, or other churches, uh, it, during the Christ era of 2,000 years, they misunderstood the law. They thought they could read scriptures and say that you're not under the law, that we, we, we need to just forget about the law. That's called wrong answer. I'm going to teach the law here, but I'm also going to teach you that you're not under the law. And, and the key scripture for that, which a lot of people missed, which David didn't miss, which his great-granddaughter Mary didn't miss, and probably Joseph, her husband, didn't miss, and Elizabeth, and probably Zachariah, her husband, and uh, the 12 disciples are being indoctrinated into this, which is sound doctrine, not Hammer, hammer people with the law. And the basis for this whole understanding is it starts with 26 of Exodus. If you skip over this, you're going to miss the whole ball game. And it's very similar to, we, we, we're going to look at Deuteronomy, we looked at 7-7, seven, seven, but we're going to look at chapter 7 and chapter 8, which are the cornerstone scriptures basically of your entire Bible, because God's going to tell Moses, the Lord's going to tell Moses that I, I offered you humiliation to let you know that people die unless they allow me to humiliate them. If all you get is normal, human, Gentile conversation, you're going to die. That's the point. And every word that proceeded from the mouth of God is related to you doing what you're told as far as commandments go. And the core commandment is, as usual, living bread. Which is, I'm going to humble you and lower you. You're going to be quiet and you're going to do some love duties for me. You're going, to, you're going to deliver people. You're going to bind up the brokenhearted. You're going to bring intelligence to people who don't have intelligence. And, that, and that's going to be your life. When you, when, now that you've committed yourself to this, then now I'm going to love you. That's the point. The Master loved Jesus Christ before he came. The Father loved Jesus Christ before, before he came to earth. But then the Master, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, refers to the reason why the, the, the Father loves him is because he's offering himself as a living sacrifice and laying down his life for the brethren. That's why the Father loves him. He loves him, uh, basically, uh, anyway, but since he's going to purchase millions of human beings who are going downstairs so they don't have to go downstairs, Father's happy with that, with that legal purchase and the legal purchase is only done through humiliation. That's what this is all about over and over again out there. And, and uh, even if you go to Exodus 20 here, or you go to Deuteronomy 7 and 8, everything seems to repeat itself. For those of you who have eyes to see, I'm going to help you see this. Because that's what he told Moses. I, I, I lowered you, Moses, so that you can see. And now you can see that you, there is no eternal life unless you do what I tell you to do in relationship to being a servant. The father called Mo Moses, my servant Moses. He told Joshua, what? Have I not commanded you, Joshua? 
As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's take a break here. We'll be right back to our next segment. Uh, as we, I want to get into Corinthians, but I want to talk a little bit about Corinthians, uh, Exodus 20, and a little bit of Deuteronomy 7, 7, and so forth, about what is love. And Jesus has been talking about love, loving certain people a long time ago. Exodus is a long, long time ago. That's a long... Uh, It's a couple of years before uh, uh, Joseph shows up. Okay, I'll be right back with our remainder because we still have Corinthians I'm going to get into and bounce around. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Exodus a little to show you how nothing really changes. The Lord Jesus Christ told the devil, Man shall not live by bread alone. That's a precise quote from Deuteronomy, which is the same thing God told Moses. Moses and Jesus Christ have a lot in common. Both of them are deliverers, and both of them have opened themselves up to what the Father wants them to do, which is to save people at your pleasure expense. It doesn't get any more simpler than that. Now, I'm going to elucidate and, and, and delineate what I just told you, which is what I do here every day. It's about the same thing. Now, we're going to get back into money and, and, and hoarding in, in, in a moment here. And uh, I have some, uh, some points I want to make uh, as I finish up my first board here on Corinthians. But I wanted to point out in, in Exodus 20 that, uh, that verse 22, I am the Lord thy God which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Now we get the Ten Commandments. So Moses was brought out of bondage too. But, but he had to make a commitment to being a leader. See, there you go. Leadership duties. Not a piece of cake. It, it, it's not pleasure in Egypt with silk and wine and women or whatever they do out there in Egypt, which is called Babylon which is the wildlife, uh, Moses said, okay, okay, I'll trade in for the, for the pearl of great price. I will trade in everything in my field and go in the desert. The Bible says that Moses thought about this decision. And it's basically the same decision everyone does, has to make. When Jesus made a commitment to, to die for mankind and, and, and to take on the sins of the world, he was baptized, and, and the Holy Spirit led him to live out his commitment. To go into the wild and live out his commitment. His commitment was to say no to the world, because for some reason he loved Jeremiah, which is, which is amazing in itself. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we, me, I'm a son of God. Wow, that, that, that's, he, he sure did open up the floodgates. And his mercy definitely is awfully high as the sky. So it, 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 let's get to that. 26, I'm going to shut down here. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So here we go. No other gods besides me. Don't make any graven image and bow down to them. Uh, any creepy little creature. Don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Keep the Sabbath. Honor your mother and father. These are the ten right here. And the point is, is that he says, I'm going to have mercy on thousands of people. Now, then he says, keep my commandments. Now, there's a problem right there. Did you see it? it there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it creates... It creates a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It creates a dichotomy here. That, that On the one hand, keep my commandments. On the other hand, mercy. Mercy means that you didn't obey the commandments. Then he says, keep my commandments. Wait a minute. Then he clarifies it. By saying, those who fear me. That's how, he clarifies it. That's how he clarifies it. Verse 20. 
and that his fear may be before your eyes that ye sin not. But the bottom line is, how, how, how can you show mercy? To people who are perfect in keeping the law. They don't need mercy, is the point. We're break, I'll take a break here. Maranatha. Okay, we're back in action here. Uh, I was supposed to get into Corinthians here, but I, I got a little action going into cross-referencing Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 6 and 7 and 8 because I'm going to bounce back and forth with you on those references quite a bit because they are the cornerstone of your Bible. It's where, it's where God says commandments are basically everything. When the master comes, he has commandments. Keep my commandments. Nothing actually changes. Now, I'm going to help you understand the difference between Old Testament commandments and New Testament commandments. I'm also going to help you understand that they're basically the same thing most of the time. Or a, a good lion's share. And, and we, we can see that by, by, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God, which is also a reference to Exodus 20. So Exodus 6, 15 is the same thing as Exodus 25. And in other words, it's back and forth with these books. Also, you have references to chapter 8 of the same book, and sometimes chapter 11 and so forth. And so it's, it's basically a, a theme, and the theme is, is jealousy is, the, is what you don't want from God. What you want is, is Revel, uh, 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 Deuteronomy 6.13, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him. That's what I want to focus on. I mentioned to you that, that servanthood is the key to Christianity. And for those of you who haven't seen that, you will get it as time goes on. What does the Master say here? Serve him. What did the Master tell the devil? Serve him alone. What did the Master tell you? If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to serve. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. So for this word to be repeated over and over again, uh, uh, we should be on this like, uh, like gravy on, 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 you know, on chicken fried steak. I mean, this, we, we, have to, we have to get on this. But the fear of the Lord is, begin is the beginning of wisdom and, and, and having mercy on those thousands of people I have mercy who have fear of me. So the Lord is saying, ooh, uh, you better obey all the commandments. Then he says, I'm going to have mercy on you. So what we have is a paradox. We, 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 we have, I really want you to be serious about the commandments, but you don't have to be perfect because otherwise I wouldn't use the word mercy. See, and then when we get into to, uh, subjection to the Lord and servanthood, then we, we, we broaden the whole idea out to, to humiliation is the key because, because he's, the master is going to tell, tell um, Moses that I humbled you. If ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, and keep, uh, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware to his fathers. So there you go. You're going to get mercy, which means you're not going to be held accountable for your sins. And that's the covenant he made with you. That's why I call this ministry New Covenant, because you're making an agreement with God that you understand that you have to be mercy, number one. Number two, that he wants you to pay attention to things 
that he wants you to pay attention to. Put it simply. That's just, we don't need to really elucidate that point uh, uh, anymore at this point. I'm just gonna be, uh, Jeremiah is Mr. Bottom Line. Now, now we have some uh, uh, um, other problems or, or other issues dealing with this, but I'm giving you the bottom line now. Neither in, 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 in Deuteronomy 7, 16. Neither shalt thou serve their gods. Back to serve again. Service is another word for love and devotion. That's what the master said. He, he gets jealous. And the bottom line is, it, we just looked at Solomon who gave you a wonderful, uh, eloquent observation of jealousy. That jealousy is stronger than death. And one of the key scriptures, and we're going to move on to Corinthians, is Deuteronomy 8, 2. The Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you and to know what's in your heart, whether thou wouldst keep this my commandments or not. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, there you go, and to give you limited supplies of things that are along the lines of pleasure. Everything is the same thing over and over again. And it's in contrast to where you lived in Egypt, where you were the prince and you had luxury and satin and wine and song. Now, I introduced some difficulty for you and told you to do this and told you to do that to see if you love me and to see what was inside your heart. Whether you would love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We'll be right back with our next segment. <laughs> 